pouring down My roof began to leak So I called the carpenter The shop was up the street I begged him to come quickly He promised that he would It wasn't long till I heard a knock And on my front door he stood With wisdom in his eyes box in his hand I told, I told him I was desperate he seemed to understand I didn't know what was in store that dark and rainy day when the carpenter came I asked him to come in he put his tools down on the floor Seemed to know his way around Like he'd seen the place before Right away he went to work He knew just what to do It wasn't long till he fixed the roof And I thought he was through Then he tore down one whole wall What? I didn't ask him if he could Hey! First I was furious, then I saw the rotten wood. He told me not to worry, he'd build it back like new. He said it might take some time, but he'd stay to see it through. With wisdom in his eye, a toolbox in his hand. I thought he'd come just to patch things up, but he had bigger plans. After all he's done for me, I won't forget the day when the carpenter came. Still at work today, he says that he won't stop. Till the house is perfect from the bottom to the top. I learned that I can trust him, so I'll wait patiently. And if he stays forever, that's all right with me. With wisdom in his eye, a toolbox in his hand. I thought he'd come just to patch things up, but he had bigger plans. After all he's done for me, I won't forget When the carpenter came, when the carpenter came to stay. Don't do that. I'm not finished yet. <laughs> Everyone is more than what or who we think they are. Now, we tend to categorize people by size or shape or color or condition or culture or political party or college football team. <laughs> but everyone is more than who or what they, we think they are. We tend to form our opinion about individuals based on one or two experiences with them or their job title or some other little narrow aspect of their life. But everyone is more than who or what we think they are. And the apostles Peter, James, and John find that out today about Jesus. Now, until this episode on the Mount of Transfiguration, which is in that window right there in the back of the, of the church, Peter and the guys know that Jesus is a charismatic character. He's a compelling communicator. He's a miracle maker. But on that mountain, they get a glimpse of His glory as somebody who's right up there with the top two guys in Israel's history. That would be Moses the lawgiver, who also got bright and shiny on the mountain, and Elijah the prophet, who ascended into heaven in a chariot of fire. Now, up until this time, Peter and the guys have whispered to each other the M word, Messiah, about Jesus. 
But seeing him bright and shiny as a flash of lightning, that sealed the deal. And they said, this is the guy. He really is the Messiah. Everyone, everyone is more than who or what we think they are, including Jesus for his disciples and for us. <clears throat> the good news is Jesus doesn't require that we realize or recognize who he is, God in the flesh, before he offers us his friendship or helps us through a mess. He's that unassuming, humble guy in the song that we think is just the carpenter whose shop is down the street. And he's okay with our thinking that at first, because if we knew who he actually is, the Messiah, we might be too intimidated or terrified to call him when we need help. But that's kind of what lots of us have experienced in life. Somewhere in our life, the rain was pouring down and we found ourselves in a mess and our roof began to leak, so we called the carpenter. We asked God or Jesus or the universe or somebody out there. We asked them for help, and we begged them to come quickly and hoped that they would understand because we were desperate. And like the competent carpenter that he is, he showed up on the front door of our life. He knocked on that door, ready to address our mess if we would open that door and ask him in. And we did. And right away he went to work. He knew just what to do. It wasn't long till he fixed the roof. He got us through whatever our mess was. And we thought that he was through. But no. You see, the carpenter knows his way around our life like he's seen the place before because he made us. He knows us. He knows our strengths and our weaknesses. He knows our successes and our failures. He knows our skills and our character flaws. And He loves us enough to accept us just the way that we are and to come when we ask Him for help with a particular leak in our life. But He loves us too much to let us stay the way we are and to ignore the other leaks in our life Leaks we may or may not even be aware are dripping. The risk in calling the carpenter is he knows his way around our life and where all the leaks are. And when we open the door of our heart and ask him in, it won't be long before he starts tearing down a wall, not asking if he could. And tearing down walls inside of us hurts. It's painful. It's unpleasant. And we are probably going to be furious when he does it. But that's what it takes to expose the rotten wood in our life. Our poor choices, our bad behavior, our unhealthy habits, our selfishness, our mistreatment of others and our environment. The carpenter doesn't rip away our leaky bits to make us squirm or make fun of us. He does it because he fully intends to build us back like new. And although it might take some time, he'll stay to see it through. When we call the carpenter, we often think that he's just going to come and patch things up. But he has bigger plans. And as we continue saying yes to him, he'll keep working. He won't stop until our house, our spirits, our minds, our bodies, our emotions, our relationships, our finances. He won't stop until our house is perfect from the bottom to the top, until we're entirely healthy in every area of our life, which is really what we want, isn't it? If there's some part of your life right now that's not as healthy as you would like it to be, or if the rain is pouring down and something in your life is leaking, call the carpenter today. Beg him to come quickly because he promises that he will. Now, if you've already let him into your house and he's working on whatever it is you called him to do, don't be surprised if he finds more to fix than you originally thought you needed or wanted. And whatever wall he tears down, 
let's say yes to the carpenter every day and cooperate as he exposes the termites and the rotten wood in our life and builds us back like new. Let's decide if he stays forever. That's all right with me. Now, if you've called the carpenter, but not given him permission to inspect your whole house, your spirit, your mind, your body, your emotions, your relationships, your finances, today is the perfect time to do that because Lent begins this week on Ash Wednesday. Lent is the 40 days before Easter when the church invites us to give the carpenter permission to poke around our house, our spirit, our mind, our body, our, our emotions, our relationships, our finances, and show us anything that needs to be repaired or replaced so that we will be healthier and readier to celebrate the resurrection on Easter. Now, for Lent, some folks give up something for those 40 days that gets in the way of their health, like a particular food or drink or activity or attitude. Other people add something to their life for those 40 days that helps them be healthier, like being here at church every Sunday during Lent, or giving God some time daily in prayer or study, or giving Him some more money, or doing some of the things listed in your Lenten bulletin insert. And whether you give up something or take something on, the point is not just to give it up. It's to let the carpenter work on you and in you to make your house more perfect from the bottom to the top. Because that's what carpenters do. Everyone is more than what or who we think they are, including Jesus. He is the carpenter but he's also so much more. And now that you know who this song is about, let's hear it again. The rain was pouring down. My roof began to leak. So I called the carpenter whose job was up the I asked him to come quickly, he promised that he would. It wasn't long till I heard a knock, and on my front porch he stood. With wisdom in his eye, a toolbox in his hand, I told him I was desperate, he seemed to understand. I didn't know what was in store that dark and rainy day. the carpenter came I asked him to come in he put his tools down on the floor he seemed to know his way around like he'd seen the place before right away he went to work he knew just what to do it wasn't long till he fixed the roof and I thought he was through Then he tore down one whole wall. What? He didn't ask me if he could. Hey, first I was furious. Then I saw the rotten wood. He told me not to worry. He'd build it back like new. He said it might take some time, but he stayed to see it through. With wisdom in his eyes, a toolbox in his hand. I thought he'd come just to patch things up, but he had bigger plans. After all he's done for me, I won't forget the day when the carpenter came. He's still at work today. He says that he won't stop till this house is perfect. From the bottom to the top I learned that I can trust him So I'll wait patiently And if he stays forever That's all right with me With wisdom in his eyes 
toolbox in his hand. I thought he'd come just to patch things up, but he had bigger plans. After all he's done for me, I won't forget the day when the carpenter came. When the carpenter came to stay. Thank you very much. In this carpenter,